On a recent flight, we got a yellow indication of low fuel pressure. Always concerning when you see a yellow indication on your G3X system. We looked and noticed that the fuel pressure was running 19.9 and the threshold for going yellow was right below 20 PSI, right at the edge of where we had set the low fuel pressure indication warning. Not immediately concerning, just something we wanted to keep an eye on. Uh, and this is running off the mechanical fuel pump. Obviously, we can always turn on our electric fuel pump, our boost pump as a backup and increase the pressure. But one thing that became apparent uh, during this was I didn't really know what our normal fuel pressure value was. And the reason is because fuel pressure doesn't typically show up on the left side on the main screen of the G3X uh, system on the PFD. It's not one of the, the normal items that's on the indication on the left side. So it's not something you're seeing every day. You actually have to go into the fuel system, the fuel menu, uh, to read fuel pressure. And so lo as long as there's no warnings uh, and it's running inside the preset range, then no real cause for concern. I didn't have a good idea nominally of where the fuel pressure was when it was running to know if 19.9 was lower than what it would normally run at. Continue the flight, did another flight after that, still ran right in the 19.9, 19.8 range. I reached out to our uh, engine manufacturer, Aerosport Power, and uh, asked them about it, and they said, oh, that's actually pretty low. Uh, it should be nominally up more in the 25 range, and if it gets below 20, you're actually maybe a little bit of a cause for concern. Obviously, it could be the fuel pump. Uh, seemed unlikely, since the engine only has less than 200 total hours total time on it. It could have been a loose connection, you know, some obstruction in the line, filter clog, you know, a lot of different items. Uh, all the fuel lines looked good. Good. Everything was tight, no, no evidence of a leak. Nothing really jumped out as like what might be the cause. I went back and looked at data from previous flights and noticed we were running uh, in the low 20s down to 20 nominally for a long time, even all the way back to the flight, the first flight that I had data for, which was maybe a month after our very first flight in the airplane. So it seems like it's always been running in that range. The engine did come with a test cell run at the manufacturer and it does have fuel pressure data and it did show it was making above 25 PSI fuel pressure at power when it was run with the manufacturer. The other thing we wanted to take a look at was the pressure transducer, the, the thing that's actually taking the fuel pressure measurement. Uh, is it possible there's a clog there? Is it possible it's bad? Is it possible it's not calibrated? So we tore into that, nothing jumped out of the ordinary, took it up, you know, tore the um, pieces apart and, and cleaned out the restrictors and everything that's in there. Didn't find anything. Uh, per their advice, I actually hooked up a cylinder differential pressure tester with shop air to the fuel pressure gauge to calibrate. Am I reading what I'm actually putting on it? So if I put 50 PSI of shop air with a known 50 PSI source, Am I seeing 50 PSI on the pressure transducer, the fuel pressure transducer? And I was. It's not miscalibrated. It's not didn't use the wrong uh, range in the in the G3X system, you know, and have it off. Put it back together and uh, did a quick run up outside uh, just to verify. It was still low pressure. One last thing we talked about doing prior to actually replacing the mechanical fuel pump was isolating the line, the fuel line, back to the fuel selector valve. Two wing tanks feed into a fuel selector valve. That valve then feeds forward through a filter, through the electronic boost pump, and then through tubing all the way up into the mechanical fuel pump in the engine. And the idea was, if there's a possibility of a leak somewhere in that system, it's possible that it's actually sucking some air in from a leak and it's not being able to make pressure because there's air actually being pulled in from that system. And so what we did was isolated that system off and I used a vacuum pump to actually put a slight vacuum on the line all the way back to the fuel selector valve and see, does it actually okay. hold pressure? So I have rigged up a vacuum pump to a small contraption here that connects into the fuel line. It has a ball valve and some fittings, and then that fuel line is what goes back into the center of the engine all the way back to the fuel selector valve. And the idea is that I'm going to pull some suction on this, and then I'm going to turn the vacuum off and just let it set and just see if it holds that suction. So that's about five inches of mercury. Uh, which is all, all we really need. Um, I've turned the vacuum off, I've closed the ball valve, and it's holding suction pretty good. It's not losing that suction pressure. And so that seems to indicate that um, there's no suction side issue. There's no leakage uh, where it might be pulling the fuel in from the suction side. So that basically told us, okay, well, there's not, a, there's not a source of a leak where air is being induced in that system. So really the last thing to think of was replacing the mechanical fuel pump. And so that's what we decided to do. That process was not nearly as bad as I thought. Uh, basically taking the old fuel pump off is as simple as uh, cutting some safety wire and removing two bolts.
and uh, here, you know, you can see what that looks like, but basically there's a long lever arm that sticks into the engine, into the accessory case of the engine, and there's a cam inside the engine that as the engine turns, it basically pushes that le pushes a, a piston up and down that pushes that lever arm up and down. And that uh, lever arm going up and down is uh, connected to a diaphragm in the mechanical fuel pump that's actually the, what's causing the pumping action inside the uh, mechanical fuel pump. But then the real trick was getting the new mechanical fuel pump back installed. There is a piston inside that is required for you to have in the up position when you put the mechanical fuel pump in so that the arm goes below the piston. If the piston is not up and not out of the way when you put the mechanical fuel pump in, you might actually put the arm off to the side and route around the piston as opposed to being underneath it. It's possible to be offset like that. And then if you go tighten everything down and start the engine up, now this stuff's all not in there correctly and it's gonna cause a lot of damage. So you have to be pretty, pretty careful to get that in there. It's actually pretty easy to put in and get installed correctly. The biggest challenge is holding it in place because it wants to naturally come back out while you also ensure that the lever arm is below the piston and then getting the bolts started in the system. The real question is, did the, did the little pin already fall down? And how hard is that going to be? I'm below the pen, so I'm like pushing the pen up. Did you get in? Oh, I mean, it's yeah, it's in there. I don't know if the bolts are on, right? Straight. The bolts are actually very long, and they're very, and the mechanical fuel pump is in the way of actually trying to get the bolts tightened down. And so it actually requires four hands, really, to be able to hold everything in place, keep the gasket from falling off, get the bolts in, get them started, and then get them tightened down so nothing kind of falls back out. As I told Annie at the beginning of this, I thought the hardest part of this would be actually doing the safety wire at the end, and I was right. Um, we got it all back together, took a couple of attempts to get the safety wiring in. It's just kind of a more complicated safety wiring job. And so, uh, you know, took a few attempts, but we got the safety wire back on there. And from start to finish, uh, four hours uh, from taking the cowling off to having the cowling put back on and actually doing a, a, a run up of the engine. When we did that run up, even at idle, we were making over 25 PSI of pressure, whereas before we were in the 21 range. That tells us that there was definitely something wrong with that fuel pump. Uh, the fact that it was slowly getting smaller over time, it was running in the low 20s and now it's running in the 19s, something is degrading with that fuel pump and it's it's just not able to make it. Unfortunately, we're past the warranty uh, time of that fuel pump, so I didn't get any type of warranty. I paid about $450 for the replacement pump, $100 for sending the old one back in for a core charge. It was in the $350 range. Not, not the worst aviation expense I've ever had. I hope this is helpful for people who uh, might be having an experience replacing a mechanical fuel pump on a Lycoming engine. Not a lot of documentation out there on how to do it and not a lot of other videos out there. Feel free to reach out in the comments if uh, you, know, you have any questions questions about doing this or you find yourself having to do this and need, need some help or need some advice, happy to, to follow up with anybody who's facing the same issue in the future.